Hi guys, welcome to Empower and my name is Carolyn Porter-Thomas. Thank you so much as usual for watching my YouTube channel and welcome to Motivation Monday. So in this video, I'm going to talk about negative complaints, um, specifically patient complaints or people complaining about your service or something like that. I wanted to talk about that because this is something that truthfully we have to deal with as nurses and it may come to you as it did to me as a little bit of a surprise because you know we go into nursing with this you know altruistic uh, vision of what it's going to be like and then all of a sudden all of these complications and problems arise and i don't know about you but i was not really prepared for what was in store for me um, I do feel like I was at a little bit of a advantage because while I was in college at certain points, not throughout the whole thing, but while I was at in certain points in college, I actually worked as a waitress and I was in essentially customer service. So I think that for me, it did help a lot with um, you know being a nurse because I really understood the importance of you know, treating people a certain way, making sure communication is both understood and understandable, you know, just certain little things that you might not think about if you have not been in the um, service industry. But I think that in general, I have a pretty good um, advantage potentially over a lot of other people. However, with that said, nobody is perfect and no day is the same. So we all find ourselves sometimes in certain situations that, you know, things happen and we have to kind of learn how to deal with it. So I just wanted to tell you because just the other day, it was like kind of interesting. I was taking care of a patient who um, the day prior had been extremely lethargic, lethargic to the point where they discontinued all of the medications that could have made her lethargic and um, even Benadryl and she was always scratching she had like scratch marks all over her skin um, a lot of them were bleeding so she'd have like various marks in her gown where they'd be bleeding sorry for the graphics but uh, um, so she was just you know it was a different situation different patient and so she was still sort of drowsy she wasn't I wouldn't say lethargic because as soon as you said something to her she would open her eyes and she would you know respond but she was still drowsy. So I was talking to the doctors about this, you know, her vital signs are stable. She is, you know, rousable, but she looks like she's declining. So we did a blood gas just to make sure, you know, she was okay because she did have a history of being on a BiPAP, although she wasn't on one at that time. So we just want to make sure that that wasn't the issue. So like around 12 o'clock, I get this strange call and at 12 o'clock I'm, I'm at lunch and um, somebody calls and I didn't know who it was. And the person says, you know, this patient needs help to the bathroom. And I said, oh, okay, um, can you please call the nursing assistant? I'm actually at lunch right now. And prior to that, every time I went into the room, the patient was sleeping, like sleeping to the point where, you know, you had to really get her attention for her to wake up. But she would eventually wake up, but she was sleeping. You know, I don't think much about it. I hang up the phone. I never hear anything again. Around maybe like 4 p.m., the charge nurse comes to me and she says that, there was a nun making rounds on the patients and that this patient told the nun that she had been calling since 9 a.m. to go to the bathroom and nobody helped her. So it was so bad that she had to call her husband and now her husband's there to help her go to the bathroom because we weren't helping her. The odd thing is, first of all, it was the nun that complained. But the other thing that the nun did, which I guess thinking back, it was probably the nun that called me. Well, the other thing that she did was she didn't talk to me, you know, although she did call, but that was it. I never heard anything else. She didn't talk to the nursing assistant. She didn't talk to the charge nurse. She didn't talk to the director. She writes an email and sends it to like, I think it was like the CNO or the CFO or somebody big. And so I, it, just, it was just so interesting though how things really got out of proportion and it what seems like an incredibly big deal um, at the time, I had to kind of take a step back and say to myself, you know, in the end, this is not a big deal, first of all. Second of all, 
you know, had it happened again, I'm not 100% sure I would have done anything differently, except maybe I could have woken her up to say, hey, do you have to go to the bathroom? Which usually if people have to go to the bathroom, they don't need to be woken up. They're awake because they have to go to the bathroom. So you kind of just have to like, when you get these complaints and a lot of them are really not valid, a lot of them are just ridiculous. Like you didn't sign the rounding sheet properly. I'm sorry, I have seven patients and I didn't have time to sign all of them properly and write sentences about all of them. You know, so a lot of them are really unfounded. And so what I find is when these complaints come to me, I don't look at it as a complaint towards me. I just look at it as somebody needs to do something about a situation and I am sort of their vehicle to get it done. And regardless of the situation, we need to handle this now and they need to know that they can trust me. So what I did in this situation was I went to the room and I sincerely apologized. I said, I'm really sorry. I didn't know you needed to go to the bathroom. I'm really sorry, do you need to go to the bathroom now? I can help you to the bathroom now. And at that time, the patient's husband uh, was in the room and they were actually really sweet about it. Um, they were like, no, no, don't worry, like we're fine now. I'm, and the husband was like, I'm gonna help her, like don't worry. So, um, you know, it was kind of interesting that the nun took it to that level. Um, whatever, whatever reason it was though, you know, I'm going to be forgiving of that and, you know, we're gonna move on. You know, so I just wanted to tell you that the first thing that you wanna do is try to solve the situation right away. Okay, this happened, what can be done right now? And I always try to focus on that. Like, okay, something happened and things are always gonna happen. So it's not what happens or if something's gonna happen, it's how we respond to what happens and what we can do to implement to make sure it doesn't happen again or to make sure if it happens again that you know it's not as bad as it was. So that's always like my number one thing is how can I deal with this properly? How can I make sure that you know I'm taking the good from it and I'm learning from it and not making it a bigger deal than it needs to be? That's it. So I guess if I had to sum up this video in a nutshell, it's simply that like don't make situations bigger than they are. You know, focus on what can be done and focus on what you'll do from that point out. And if people try to bring you that back to that like mistake that you did, just say, I'm aware that I did make that mistake. I apologize for it. And let's, from now on, I'm going to do this. And that's it. <laughs> so don't let other people bring you down. Make sure you stay positive and focus on the future. All right, guys, I really hope that you love this Motivation Monday tip. If you like this video, please give this video a thumbs up. And I can't wait to see you next week with another uplifting message. Please share this message with your friends, your coworkers, or anyone that might need a little positive tip. All right, guys, I love you so much. I'll see you next week. Bye. Let's stay connected, guys. No matter where you are in the world, join me here every Monday at 6.30 a.m. Eastern Time for the weekly nursing pre-huddle before your regular huddle. This will help you start your week off on the right note. Also, get email notifications as soon as the videos are published. By joining my email list, you will receive 25% discount on my best-selling books. The first book, How to Succeed in Nursing School, has been called the best nursing school preparation guide for thousands of students just like you. Many say it's a must-read before entering nursing school. In this book, I share how I went from a very average student to graduating nursing school with honors. It also includes tips on how to choose your nursing school, how to be successful in nursing school, and how to stay motivated and driven while in nursing school. The second book, New Nurse, How to Get, Keep, and Love Your Nursing Job, is an outstanding book to help nurses start their careers on the right foot or rekindle their love for nursing. We all join this profession for altruistic reasons, but sometimes the stress of the job has us beaten down. This book, I promise, will help you reignite your love for the amazing work you do. And finally, by joining, you will also have access to a 40% discount for my How to Study for Anatomy and Physiology program. In this program, I share how I went from a C average student to two semesters later was on the dean's list. I've shared these tips with thousands of other students and they have phenomenal results. Click here for information on how to join my email list. And oh yeah, make sure you subscribe to the channel also. I'll see you guys next week. Love you. Bye.